Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this series we're making Snake in Unity. In this video, we're going to handle sounds and save the high score. Let's begin! Alright, so here's our snake game. We can move the snake around and eat some food. When we eat, the snake grows, and we can now hit Escape to pause our game. And in here we got a Resume and a Main Menu. Go back there, and in the previous video we created this Main Menu. We got a How to Play, and Back to Play, and Quit, and so on. So everything is working very nice so far. Now our game is completely muted, so let's add some nice sounds. Over here in the project files, I have a sounds folder with a bunch of sounds. I have a button click, button over, snake die, snake eat, and snake move. The sound effects were created with Chiptone, which is a great free tool to create simple sounds that is actually an expanded version of another excellent tool, which is SFXR. So let's create a class to help us play our sounds. Let's go into our scripts, create a new C Sharp script. This will be our sound manager. This will be our class responsible for playing every one of our sounds. So let's make it static so we don't accidentally instantiate it. Remove mono behavior and put it like that. All right, so first let's make a very simple function to play a sound. In here, we're going to create a game object. In order to play sound, we need to add the audio source component. And now we can access the audio source and call the function play one shot. Now here in the parameters, we need an audio clip reference. So let's deal with that. We're going to go just like we've been doing to our game assets. In here, make a public audio clip and let's try out the snake move. All right, so we can go back to the sound manager, access the game assets, and call the snake move. Okay, great. So this is extremely simple. So now we can go into our snake class, and let's go down to where we are moving our snake. And here, let's go into the sound manager and call the play sound function. All right, that should do it. Now back into the editor. Let's drag the reference to our game assets, just like that. Okay. So let's test. And yep, there's the sound being played whenever the snake moves. Okay, great. So we can now play a very simple sound. Now let's change our code to be able to play different sounds. So here in the sound manager, let's create an enum to keep track of all possible sounds. Okay, these are all of our sounds. And now in our play sound function, let's receive a sound value. Now all we need to know is the auto clip that matches that particular sound. So let's go into the game assets. And here let's create a class to hold both an audio clip and a sound value. So let's make it a public class sound audio clip. Inside we have a sound manager dot sound and also a audio clip. And let's make this a serializable class so we can set it in the editor. So make it serializable and using system. All right, this should be working. And now instead of having an audio clip for the snake move in here, let's simply have an array of sound audio clip. Okay, so let's see how this looks in the editor. So here in the editor, as you can see, we got an array of sound audio clips. So let's put up five elements and here they are. And now we can set them. And yep, there it is, our snake move, snake move, snake die, and so on and so forth. So we now have a custom object keeping our audio clip and the sound together. So now all we need is to find the correct audio clip for the sound that we want. So let's go into the sound manager. And here let's make a function to do that. So a private static, it will return a audio clip. And let's call it get audio clip. In here, we're going to take a sound as a parameter. And now in here, all we do is we cycle through the array on the game assets. And if the sound audio clip dot sound matches this sound, then we return it. And in the end, if we can't find, we return null. And let's also do a debug.log error since we should never actually get to here. All right, that should be working. So now we can go up here. Instead of using this snake move, we simply use the get audio clip and we pass in our sound. So we should now be able to play any of these sounds. 
And if we want to add a new sound, we would just add another field in here and then add it on our game assets. So now let's go to the snake class. And in here, instead of just play sound, we do play sound and we pass in the sound for the snake move. Yep, just like that. And now let's deal with the snake eat and die. So in here we have a boolean, we are asking the level grid if we ate some food. If so, we do all of this. Then let's also play the sound for the snake eat. And in here we're checking if the snake has died. And if the snake has died, let's play the sound snake die. All right, so all of that should be working. Let's run the code and see if sound is correctly being played. Okay, so the move sound is working. Let's see if the eat sound. Yep, there it is. The eat sound is correctly working. So we have the move and the eat sound and our code is nicely set up to be able to add more sounds. And now that our snake is big enough, let's test out the die sound. And yep, there you go. We got a very nice game over sound. All right, so as you can see, we have all our sounds correctly working. So now let's deal with the button sounds. And for our button sounds, we're going to use something really cool, a extension method. So let's go into the sound manager. Down here, let's make a function to add the button sounds. So this is an extension method. You can see it because it has the this keyword. We're essentially adding a add button sounds method to our button UI class without modifying the code inside that class. So this is great for adding functionality to a previously written class. So for example, we can go into our main menu window. Down here, we have our code setting the click function on the button UI, yep. And now in here, I can get the button UI component. And now as you can see, I have the function add button sounds. And as you can see, it is indeed an extension method. So I simply call this function like this, and this function does not exist on the button UI, but rather in here on our sound manager. So this is great. And now in here, we can add our sounds to this button. And just like that, we are adding to our mouse over function and to our click function, we are adding these delegates, which will play the correct sounds. So this is an extension method, which is extremely useful when you want to add functionality to a class without actually having to modify that class. All right, so let's test and see if the main menu button now has a sound. Okay, so here we are in the main menu. Now let's see if the play button has a sound. And yep, there you go, there's our mouse over sound. And if I click, yep, there was the click sound. And now we're in our main menu and all the snake sounds are correctly still working. Right, great. Now let's apply the sounds to the rest of the buttons. So here on the main menu window, we simply call this on these other buttons. All right, just like that, all of our buttons should have our sounds. Now let's also go into the pause window and here do the same thing. All right, so all of our buttons should have sound. Let's test. Okay, here's the main menu. Yep, every single one of them has a sound. When I click, it also has sound, so now play. Now let's see the pause menu. And yep, there's the sound, and so on. All right, great. So we have correctly added sounds to our game. We set up the Sound Manager class to be responsible for all sounds, and we can play them when needed. So now that we have sounds working, let's deal with saving a high score. Now in here, we are already correctly calculating and displaying our current score. So let's start off by figuring out how we can store data to be able to store a high score. For storing the data, we're going to use player prefs. This is the simplest way to store persistent data in Unity. The player prefs has a set int function, which takes a key and a value that allows us to save our data. So first, let's test this out by setting a int with a key value of high score, and let's pass in the value of 100. So we do that, then we do playerprefs.save, and then let's read that value to make sure that it is working. So we do a playerprefs.getInt, and the key that we want is on high score, and let's do a debug.log on this. All right, so let's test and see if the console says 100. So here we are, and there's the console indeed saying 100. So as you can see, it's extremely simple to save and load data. Now in here, we can now hide the set int, and if we run again, it will say 100 again. 
and yep, there it is, 100 again. Okay, great. So here in our UI, we have our score window. So now let's add another text field to display the current high score. All right, so we have our high score being displayed in the corner. So let's go into the window code. Now in Awaken here, we want to read the high score. However, we don't want to deal with the player prefs directly from this window. So let's make another class to deal with the scores. So make a new c -sharp script, this will be our score. Now in here, let's make this a static class, since again, we don't want to instantiate this one. And let's make a function to return the current high score. Inside, we just do return the playerprefs.getInt, and our getInt also has a secondary function call, which as you can see, it takes a key, so our key is high score, and then we can also return a default value in case that key does not contain a value. So by default, we return a zero. All right, so that's it. And now let's go back into our score window. And in here on awake, we can simply go into our score class and get the high score. So with our high score, let's simply update our text. All right, this should be working, so let's test. And yep, there's the high score window saying 100, okay. So now here in this score, let's make a function to try to set a new high score. So we're going to make a public static bool and call it try set new high score. Essentially, this function will test to see if the score is a new high score. If so, it will return true. If not, it will return false. So the first thing we do is get the current high score. Then we do a test if the current score is higher than the previous high score. And if so, we want to replace the stored high score. And if we did set a new high score, then we have correctly set it. So we return true. And if not, we return false. So whenever we call this function, we know if our given score is a new high score or not. Okay, so just for testing, let's go into our game handler and try to update the high score to 200. So we go into the score class, we call try set a new high score to 200. And yep, there it is, the high score now says 200. Okay, great. So we can now read the current high score and save a new one. Now let's call those functions when the snake dies. Now the snake, let's go to the code where the snake has died. Yep, in here. And as you can see, we are calling our game handler function. So in this function, when the snake dies, we show the game over window and let's also update the high score. So we do a score dot try set a new high score and we pass in the score, which is currently being stored on this class. But now that we have a dedicated score class, we should keep all of our score code in that class instead of in here. So let's do that. All right, so we now have all of our score code inside our score class, and let's make another function of this one, which takes no parameters, since this class is the one that contains the score. So we simply do this, and we return try set new high score with our current score. All right, this should work. Now let's also fix the issue on our score window, which in here is asking the game handler. Now instead, let's ask the score class. And here on the snake, when we are calling at score, instead we tell the score class. All right, great. So now everything is working in here in the game handler. When the snake dies, we try to set a new high score. However, we still have one issue, which is on the score window. In here, we are only updating the high score text on awake. So when the snake dies, this code will not update. So in order to fix that, let's go into the store class. All the way up here, let's make a event. Call it on high score change. So we have that event, and now let's trigger the event when we set a new high score, which is in here after we set the player prefs and we save, we check if we have subscribers to this event. If so, let's fire it. All right, the event should be working, so we can now go back into the score window. And on awake, instead of having this, we go into the score class, we subscribe to the on high score changed event. 
and let's make a function to update all right so we got a function to update our high score we call that function on awake and also when the high score has changed so we should be able to save a new high score if we beat the current high score and we should be able to see it updated on the score window so let's test Okay, so here we are with a high score of 200. We get 100 per food we eat. So all we need to do is eat more than two and we will beat our current high score. So we have a score of 600, which is bigger than the current high score of 200. So now let's die and see what happens. Yep, we have died and as you can see, the high score has correctly increased to 600. And now if we hit retry, Yep, there you go, it still saves and it still says 600. All right, so we are correctly saving our high score. Now, one more thing we can do is change the game over window for when we beat the high score. First, let's go into the score window and make a function to hide it. So we can hide this when we show our game over window. Okay, so we can now hide the score window. We are doing that so that we hide the score when you show the game over window. So let's go in here and let's first change it in the editor. Here we have the game over window with a retry button. Now let's put a text field above it. So we have a congratulation message that will appear when we beat the high score. We have something showing our score in this run and we have something showing the currently saved score. All right, so let's deal with that in the code. Here on the game over window, first we need to know if we did beat the high score. So on our show static, we're going to receive a boolean for is new high score. And in here, if this is a new high score, we want to show the message. If not, then we want to hide it. So essentially set the text object game object to active based on if it is a new high score. And then for the normal score text, let's just change that. All right, so we show the new high score text. If this is a new high score, if not, it is hidden. Then we show the current score for this run, and then we show the currently saved high score. So now all we need to go is go into the game handler, and down here, when the snake has died, we show static, then we need to save on this function, which returns if this is a new high score. So we pass that to that, and let's also hide the score window. All right, everything should be working. Let's test. Okay, here we are, everything is still perfectly normal. The current high score is 600. So let's try to beat that. Okay, we have 900. Now let's lose and see. Yep, there you go, there's a message saying a new high score. The currently saved high score is 900, which is the one we got in this run. And as you can see, the score window on the background is hidden, so everything looks nice and clear. Now let's try if we don't beat the high score. As you can see, the high score is currently 900. Okay, so we have 600, which is under the current high score. So let's die and see. And yep, there it is. It does not say the congratulations message. And it does show the current score of 600 for this run and the stored high score of 900. So there you have it. We added sounds to our game for the various actions of the snake as well as for the buttons. We also set up a class to handle scoring with the ability to get the current high score and save a new one. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.